All right, I think, I think we're better now. Just uh, give me a head nod for me. A little wiggle. All right, so you're good. <laughs> All right, I think it's just a confluence of a bunch of factors, but it looks better now. So give me like 30 seconds and then we'll roll it again. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? We are back here on Laying the Points, Vervis podcast brought to you by my bookie. I'm Anthony Miko. You can find me on Twitter at Amixta. And my co-host is Action Network writer Matt LaMarca. You can follow on Twitter at Matt LaMarca. Matt, how's it going? Going good. Um, just got my my new home office all set up here. And by new home office, I mean I added one monitor to my system. <laughs> uh, hi highly recommended. It's uh, it's really nice. You know, I've been saying like you don't realize how small the laptop monitor is until you hook it up to a different screen. And now it's just like I'm seeing things I've never seen before hidden in the depths of pages. It's great. <laughs> There's like a Bill Walton quote in there. I feel like. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we had a little bit of technical stuff trouble getting started but uh i think we're good now so i'm pretty happy uh chat if you're out there uh if anything seems choppy just let me know and i will uh complain about it and then rectify it probably tomorrow like <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, a quick reminder before we get into the show you can support the road of his radio network and our 10 shows per week on patreon uh you know you give us basically five dollars per month on patreon Gives you access to Road of His Live, which is our weekly Sunday morning show, answering all your fantasy questions. Also helps to support, you know, the rest of the programming that we offer here on Road of His Radio. So, you know, check that out. You're doing us a favor, and uh, you're doing yourself a favor because I mean, the Sunday morning show, you get a lot of good info, a uh, really personalized opportunity to interact with some of our hosts, and uh, you know, help get your lineup set, all that stuff. So, definitely check that out. Uh, Road of His Radio Patreon. Uh, speaking of exclusives, if you are a loyal podcast listener, really honestly, if, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, we have no idea of knowing, uh, <laughs> you can get 30% off a Road of His NFL Pass by going through the podcast homepage, roadofhis.com slash podcast. Only a few weeks left before those fantasy playoffs. I know we're all kind of in crunch time in the Lindy Leagues. Uh, I'm sure it's like that for everyone. So get access to the Road of His Pass, lets you see... You know, our favorite pickups, our favorite starts, our favorite sits, all that stuff. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of your trade deadlines have passed, so that's probably not too, super applicable. But, uh, you know, you get the pass, and hopefully it helps you win your league. Uh, but the real reason we're here tonight, the real reason uh, we're here every week at this time, is uh, to talk NFL lines courtesy of my bookie, Week 13 NFL. Again, my bookie is our presenting sponsor. We love my bookie. Um, yeah. I'm a big fan after that promotion on Thanksgiving. Oh yeah. I mean if you didn't if you didn't take the advantage of the free bet on Thanksgiving, uh I'm sorry. It'll probably never happen again. My book you just the ultimate goat. Literally giving away money. So Yep. Not that we needed it because we took Bears minus three. Yes, I'm very thankful for front door cover pick sixes this Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, that was uh that was tasty. Because I wasn't feeling great about that game, but Matt Stafford knew just what to do. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, we got another Thursday night game here. Saints minus seven and a half at the Cowboys. 52 and a half point total in this one, Matt. I mean, I, I, I mean, good grief. We're a broken record on this every week, right? But it's all about the favorites uh, crushing this year. Opening favorites are covering 60.4% of the time, all time on the Thursday night game, or at least over, you know, since 2003. 
Uh, 10, 1, and 1 this year. That's for teams opening as the favorite. You know, closing favorites are still doing pretty well. Right. It's um, like one extra loss. Yeah. What uh? What is your takeaway on this game, Matt? Because we haven't really seen like the big road favorite in a while. A lot of these favorites have been at home. Yeah, my, my take is that this line is probably too high. You know, like this line is saying that the Saints are would be 13 and a half point favorites versus the Cowboys at home. That feels pretty aggressive. I mean, they were only 13 point favorites at home against Atlanta. I think at this point we can all pretty much agree that the Cowboys are better than them. Um, but I'm not, I don't have enough conviction in that, that I'm willing to go against what's basically been the strongest trend to back this season. You know, like you mentioned the numbers, if you just blind bet Thursday night favorites and we've come on, we came on board with that pretty quickly. Like if you just blind bet the Thursday night favorites, you'd be rich this year, you know, assuming you're betting like a million dollars a game. (laughs) So I'm just going to keep doing it. Uh, I mean, I don't feel strong enough with the Saints that I'm going to put them in my five pack this week, but I also don't feel strong enough in the Cowboys that I'm willing to pick against it. Yeah, and by the way, that's like Simmons' new thing. He's like, I'm up, I'm up four point three million dollars after last <laughs> yeah, year. Yeah, I've, I've heard it. <laughs> so funny. Um, but I, I mean, I'm still rolling with the Saints. I think Dallas stinks. Like I know that they uh, have obviously been winning. But, like, I – and maybe Stinks is strong, but, like, I still just think that the Saints are so good. Like, I've thought this for the past, like, three games. Oh, line's too big. Line's too high. Oh, Saints land too many points, and then they win by 40. They win by yep. 30. You know, like – and for me, like, Dallas is decent, but when you look at what the Saints have done, and this is what my Action Network piece was on this week, like, the Saints since week three have been, like, a top five defense. They're fourth in points allowed. Uh, you know, all of their traditional metrics, like yards per attempt, stuff like that is like pretty average, but they're great against the run. They've been one of the best run defenses all season. We know that Dallas really wants to run the ball. Easy to defend their run when you're up by 30 every game. No, that's fair. (laughs) But I mean, even like, like the DVOA, like I'm not talking, you know, when I say against the run, I I never mean like yards per game, stuff like that. Those metrics suck. Um, but like, I, I feel like if you stop the run, you stop Dallas and you know, they still don't have Sean Lee. I just I feel like the Saints are gonna just roll them. It's definitely a possibility. I mean, I'm not ruling that fact out. I just think that anytime you have a team that's on a ten game win streak, like there's bound to be an overinflated spread. So I could be wrong. Um, we have the calculated spread on this game as Saints favored by six over at the Action mm-hmm. Network. So. That's pretty much along the lines of what I'm thinking. Like you're getting a, a little bit of spread value here with the Cowboys and it is taking you across a key number, but I don't actually have the heart to, to back them. Yeah. That, that, I mean, I think that that's very reasonable, very, very responsible take. Uh, Colts minus four at the Jags, 47 point total on this one, Matt. Uh, what do you think? Here's a responsible take. I, I'm all in on the Colts this week. Yes. Uh, I just don't, see how the Jaguars have anything left. You know, like they threw their best punch literally last week and couldn't beat the Bills. Now they don't have Leonard Fournette. They're going to have Cody Kessler at quarterback. They may not have Jalen Ramsey. Uh, Half of their offensive line is hurt. And the Colts are like legitimately just a good football team, particularly on offense. They just move the ball. So uh, I will take the Colts here as a road favorite, which is something I don't, typically love doing but i think that this is a spot where we could see a blowout win yeah i totally agree i mean if you just look at andrew luck in his career uh 40 46 32 and 3 against the spread 59 percent uh 26 17 and 2 so 60 and a half percent as a favorite so i mean luck as a favorite has been a really good bet for his career obviously not as big a sample as the guys like brady and rogers uh, but pretty much in that tier in terms of being able to cover and I think this is probably the best – I don't want to necessarily say it's best Luck's ever been. I think he's as good as he was the last time we saw him healthy. Uh, and the off- But I think it's the best the offense has ever been. I mean, Luck has not has barely been touched. Forget sacks. He's only been hit like three times right. in the past like two months. Like it's insane, uh, the pass protection. And I feel like if you do that with a good quarterback against the team manned by Cody Kessler, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, the, I think the Colts can really mop them up. 
does the T.Y. Hilton thing make any sort of difference to you? I mean, I don't really know the, the depth of the injury. I feel like it's possible it's just maintenance. Um, if he doesn't play, obviously that, that matters. But, I mean, Jalen Ramsey might not play. You know, like I don't, right. I don't know if, I, if it really matters to me that much. And I love to. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think I think it's like I don't even know if it's worth half a point on the spread. Maybe if maybe half a point. So right. I wouldn't be too concerned with that. Yep, completely agree. Uh, and Jojo in the chat agrees. He said, who would have thought Colts O-line is better than Jags defense uh, front to back in week one? Who would have thought investing first round draft picks in offensive linemen was a good idea? You know, <laughs> revolutionary stuff being done in that Colts front office. Well, I mean, listen, compared to the last regime, it's like uh, <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, Chargers at Steelers, uh, Pittsburgh coming off a, a really bad loss last week to uh, my favorite cover of the year, Denver Broncos. Um, Steelers are favored by three and a half, 51 and a half point total. I mean, this is a, a really good matchup of quality AFC teams. Uh, no Melvin Gordon because of uh, your boy, Anthony Lynn, completely mismanaging his reps. Um, what do you make of the matchup? Yeah. What's the point of having a coaching staff if players can just talk their way onto the field? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Or trainers or whatever. Like, it makes no sense. You know, way to go, Melvin. Glad you came out there for a, you know, 35-point drumming last week. Um uh, the Steelers, we know what they are, right? Like you fade them on the road and you play them at home. Uh, a lot of people I'm sure took them last week on the road against the Broncos. You know, it was a bit of a trap spot, just like it always is for the Steelers when they're on the road. Just don't do it. So now that we're at home, we're getting them uh, laying basically th the, the field goal plus half a point, saying that they're half a point better than the Chargers on a neutral field. Um, I think that's probably a touch low. I, I think that the Steelers are the side that I like here. Yeah, uh, Big Ben for his career, thirty-eight and twenty-seven off of a loss against the spread, uh, has covered against the spread in five straight losses, which uh, spans all of two thousand seventeen and two thousand eighteen. Uh, so Ben Ben off a loss has been a really good bet traditionally, and uh, the Chargers are in line to fall prey to one of my favorite trends, which is teams coming off a blowout win. Uh, opposing teams covering 56% of the time. So, I mean, uh, the Chargers getting that big win last week against a bad team, I feel like doesn't really matter that much to me. Uh, what matters more is what was evident in the coaching decisions with rapport. And I still think the Steelers are really good. And at home, I mean, I have to, at home, you could probably argue they're like the second best team in the AFC. So Yeah, I, I think uh, that's fair. Yeah, so I, I, uh, I will take Pittsburgh here. Yep, and 56% against the spread doesn't sound like a massive number, but when you have, you know, typically multiple teams a week fitting that trend going on 15 years, that can be a really profitable thing. So, absolutely. Yeah, I I you know, the law of large numbers is in play here with that 56%. That's a nice trend, one that I've looked at quite a bit this year as well. Panthers minus 3 and a half at the Bucks. This is the second matchup of these two teams. 55 point total. We're going to have Jameis in the driver's seat last game. Uh, it was Fitzpatrick who started. So uh, a little bit of a different look at this game. Uh, what do you make of the matchup? I really don't know. <laughs> this is one of the, one of the games that uh, I don't have a, a strong feel on either way this week. My gut is saying that the Panthers should win this game. They're the better team. They're in a little bit of a desperate spot. You know, they need to win. Uh, if they want to hold on to their playoff positioning, since they have no chance of catching the Saints for the division, uh, it, co it could come down to, you know, one or two games for the wild card. So I want to say we're going to get the Panthers best effort here, and they're clearly a superior team to the Bucks. but you never know. Uh, the, the spread feels a little trappy, you know, only laying three and a half on the road, but I think that that's the side I'm ultimately going to take. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of with you. I don't have a true lean on the on the game itself. I, I think that my biggest lean is on the total because if you just look at the Bucks, I mean, the Bucks have been a complete print fest on overs this year, eight and three to the over. Uh, obviously, did lose that last week. Mm -hmm. uh, but Tampa Bay and Carolina have combined uh, eight and three on the over with totals of fifty or more. So Tampa is six and three against that. Uh, Carolina two and zero. Oh when the total is 50 points or more going over. 
Uh, and I don't think either of these defenses are good. I mean, I think that saying the Bucks defense is bad is obviously not a stretch at all, right? Like, they just get shredded. They are, like, the prime matchup right now for running backs, and Christian McCaffrey is, like, I don't know. He hit, the, he hit, he like grabbed the star in Mario and like, he can't be touched. And I just feel like the Panthers defense isn't, isn't very good. I mean, they gave up 30 points last week. They gave up 52 to the Steelers. They gave up, uh, you know, 28 the last time these teams played. They gave up, uh, you know, 20 plus to a bunch of other teams that I don't think are that good. Uh, I just don't really believe in the defense. I think that they're opportunistic, but I think overall, like they can give up points. Um, so I kind of expect this to be a little bit more of a shootout. So I like the over on 55. Uh, past that, no, no true lean on the on the matchup. Yeah, true shocker here that Nick Mullins turned out to not be very good at quarterback. Yeah, that sucks. Who saw that coming, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he had a shot. He had a shot to do it, you know, for the squad. Got through uh, like a million picks in the preseason, and uh, turns out he maybe isn't ready to play NFL quarterback. So yeah. So you don't think that like a nice game on Thursday night or, or on Monday night against the Giants is indicative of anything. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, <laughs> I think that may have been a little bit of an outlier. All right, Ravens at Falcons. I, this is, to me, the most confusing game of the week because uh, Atlanta's favored by one at home. The total's at 48 and a half. We have, uh, of course, Lamar the GOAT at quarterback again. Yeah. That he will start. Hey, he's the GOAT in my heart. He's like the sheep at that's, right now. That's fine. Like, I, can, I can handle that. <laughs> okay. I really, uh, I want to take the Ravens. I think that the Ravens have kind of underperformed their record all year. Mm -hmm. But I just don't trust Lamar Jackson if this game turns into an offensive contest. You know, like we've seen Lamar be able to control the games that he's played by keeping the ball on the ground, moving it with Gus Edwards. But those games have come against some really poor offensive teams in Oakland and Cincinnati. You know, if they're going into Atlanta and planning on just running the ball the whole game and their defense can't get stops, that could be a formula for trouble. So I, I really don't feel great on this game. I think I'm tentatively going to lean the Falcons minus one. Um, I just think that if they can put up enough points and put Lamar Jackson in a situation where he's trailing, I don't. I haven't seen enough out of him throwing the ball that makes me feel confident that he can bring a team back. You know, he's thrown. He threw two interceptions last week. He threw at least one the week prior. Yep. Uh, have haven't really seen him do enough with the arm yet to make me feel comfortable backing him against a competent team. So we'll see what happens this week. Uh, I think this is a game where you probably want to proceed with caution just because we're dealing with, you know, limited information compared to the rest of the teams in the NFL. But uh, that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to go with the Falcons as a small home favorite. Yeah, I uh, I think this line is a trap because I think that the initial thought for a lot of people is, well, the Ravens have won two straight games with Lamar. Like, they're hot right now. The Falcons stink. They, they have a sub-500 record. Like, why wouldn't we take the Ravens here as a road dog? Um, but I'm kind of with you. Like, I don't know. Like, I, the Falcons' defense is really bad, but I'm not sure that they are bad against quarterbacks like Jackson because, I mean, first of all, they're really heavy when they play in cover three, and that's going to keep, like, a lot of their linebackers and, and safeties and corners, like, all their – back seven personnel like they're still going to be facing the line of scrimmage so like when jackson takes off some runs he's not going to have like these huge lanes like he does against like a heavy man team so like i'm a little nervous from that perspective and also like yeah like you really want to be able to throw against the line like you can run against falcon sure but like if any team that you're going to run the ball a lot against like it's just going to keep them in it because you know it's hard to put together these you know 60 70 yard drives where you're running the ball 80 percent of the time it's really hard to string together those positive plays. So I really like the Falcons here at minus one from a betting perspective. I, I would never, t I don't think I'm going to take it just because I, I, I like Jackson. Like I don't really want to root against them, <laughs> but uh, I mean, the Falcons feel like the correct side. Like it just feels like one of those lines where you're like, Oh, it's only one. Like I'm going to, I'm going to take Baltimore. And then you're like, Oh, no well, Falcons won by, you know, field goal or something. Yeah. And I think one thing to keep your eye on too is, is the status of Deion Jones who came off injured reserve but hasn't played in either of the last two games, yep. if he's back in, that's a big boost for the Falcons' defense. Huge. So 
I would be watching that status. That could definitely have an impact on how I feel about this game. Yeah, because he's athletic enough to chase Jackson down. That dude's really good. Um, yeah. He gets lost, I think, in the defense because the defense is no good, but he, he's a good player. Um, all right. Let's move on to the next game. We, we talked enough. I, I, I tried to be good about Lamar. I didn't talk too much about it. <laughs> uh, but we got Browns at Texans, my, my, other, my other bay here, Baker. Uh, Six-point dog against the really hot Texans. I mean, Houston's won eight in a row. I can't Who believe cares? it, honestly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, right. Who's it against, right? I just, I can't believe that they won eight games in a row like, after that start. But uh, what do you like about this matchup, Matt? What do you think? So a couple things I noticed. First off, I had an assumption that facing a team uh, on a long winning streak would create some spread value. And there appears to be some validity to that. Uh, teams facing a team on a win streak of at least eight games are 18, nine and one against the spread since 2015. Um, now that, that trend hasn't come through for us the past two weeks against the saints, but the saints have just been like busters. Yeah. They're, they're that good. So the Texans, I do not think, uh, we can put into the saints category. I don't think that's a hot take. Uh, and if you look at what the Browns have done since firing Hugh Jackson, and Todd Haley, they've been really good. I mean, which makes sense. We have been lauding the talent on this team. Lauding? Louding? I think it's What's lauding. the proper word? I think it's We've lauding, been but I'm a math teacher, so I'll give it to you. <laughs> We've been lauding the talent on this team basically all year and just saying that they're a disastrously coached team. And if you look at what they've done under Freddie Kitchens, Baker Mayfield has a 9-1 to touchdown to interception ratio. Only Drew Brees has been better on a per play basis per football outsiders. And they've had 10 red zone opportunities and converted all 10 into touchdowns. So I'm not expecting them to have a 100% touchdown efficiency moving forward, but I think we can safely say that this team uh, has improved since moving on from their coaching staff. And with that in mind, the Browns plus six here are one of my favorite picks of the week. Yeah, I mean, I, six point dog is, is pretty insane to me. Like, it feels like we're somehow still getting like the Cleveland sucks points because I mean, uh, Doug Farrar wrote a really nice piece about uh, everything that Kitchens has done. Uh, you know, writes a lot of stuff for NFL, USA Today, whatever. Um, really good article. And yeah, like Kitchens has really kind of changed the game. Like, they're running a pretty modern offense. Uh, definitely a lot closer to like what the Chiefs and Rams were doing than like what they were doing previously. So they're doing really well. Uh, I don't think it should surprise anyone that Breeze, who is basically Baker's comp, is like the only comparable quarterback in production over the last couple weeks. Like I, I think Baker's that good. I think he's legit. I mean, the dude is number one pick and uh, a fan of all the stat nerds, which I feel like never happens. So hooray us. We're all right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I really like this game. For Houston, I, I mean, uh, for Cleveland, I, something about Houston, like, I still just don't buy in. Like, I'm just waiting for the shoe to drop on them. I know they've won eight games in a row. But, like, the no Will Fuller still really worries me about their with their passing game. And, I mean, last week, I feel like the Titans just kind of went flat. Like, I, I, liked, I liked Tennessee last week, and they just didn't come out. They didn't come out well. The Lamar, uh, the Lamar Miller big touchdown run, I feel like, just kind of sucked the life out of them. I don't know. I just think two, six, six points is too big against a team that's like potentially good. Like if the Browns had this coaching staff and Baker from week one, like maybe they're in the playoff race right now. You know, like I, I don't want to get too crazy, but that's kind of how I feel. So, I mean, I think that's fair. I don't think that's crazy at all. So I, I like, I like them plus six, like you said. Right. Uh, and let's just, just to go through the, co the Texans winning streak here. Sure. They won at Indy which was a game that the Colts kind of gifted to them. I don't know if you remember how that went down with the whole overtime thing. Yep, yep. Um, they beat the Cowboys back when the Cowboys sucked. They beat the Bills by seven. They beat the Jaguars. They beat the Dolphins. They won at Denver by two, which is an impressive win. Uh, they won at the Redskins, and they beat the Titans. Right, and they kind of squeaked by the Redskins too, that game. Right, they won that pretty. game by two points as well. So, like, there's... Not a playoff team in there outside of the Colts, maybe. You know, maybe the Cowboys are a playoff team. But, like, this win streak is built on, you know, paper mache, straw house, popsicle sticks, 
whatever uh, analogy for a weak house you want to use, that's that's the Texans right now. Yeah. I mean, well, it's a lot like, I mean, that's why we liked a lot of those overs in the AFC South in the preseason shows was because the schedule was soft and that's kind of playing out. So I, I think you're right. I totally agree. Uh, Bills at Dolphins, at, at the poop factor game of the week. I have, again, zero interest in watching this contest at all. Uh, <laughs> Bills are four and a half point road dogs against the Dolphins, who, I mean, we, we are just rooting. We could not be rooting harder against the Dolphins, Matt, for the, for the last few weeks of the season. One and four, baby. You can do it. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what to make. What do you make of this game? Because I, I feel like Miami came out last week a little inspired and then ultimately lost. So, I mean, uh, how good are they still? My uh, analysis on this game is with 16 games to choose from, why in the world would you bet on this game? <laughs> I know that's hard hitting. I know that's, uh, you know, a little bit deep, but like we don't know anything about these two teams. I know they've <laughs> played a healthy amount of games at this point, but the Dolphins just went back to Tannehill. So I could see, you know, them, I could see the argument that they're not favored by enough. But at, on the other hand, like the Bills just beat the Jaguars. They've been much better offensively with Josh Allen at quarterback and their defense is legitimate. So I don't know. I guess I'm going to take the Bills and the points, but I have I I realistically have no idea, Anthony. Yeah, I mean, this is the game that I feel like you could give me like six different outcomes and I would believe them all like <laughs> sure yeah like i just i have no feel for either of these two teams and like i yeah like I, the teams have been completely different depending on the week like these have been two of the more jekyll and hyde teams on the season so of course i mean i think that that makes a lot of sense uh to speak to the josh allen numbers like they're <laughs> somehow they're offensively still somewhat the same when he's in versus when he's out. I, I still don't believe it, but like the points per drive in games where he plays is 1.26 and 1.23 in the games where he doesn't play. I would wonder how much of that is inflated by the one game where Matt Barkley just pissed on the Jets. True. You know, right. like I, I would think if you took that game out, it would be a little bit more stark of a, uh, a contrast, mm -hmm. but uh, I just, you know, watching the Bills, you can see Allen with his mobility just does things that the other quarterbacks there don't do. Yep. And actually, if I, if I just filter it for pass attempts for Allen at 20 or more, so I, he probably got like hurt in one of the games, you know, when he got injured, uh, it'd be 1.42 and then 1.18 with Allen. So that's, the, that's much different. So that makes sense. All right. Nice. There we go. I'm all about stat manipulation. That, that's just what I do. <laughs> that's what they teach us at Rotoviz. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Denver at the Natty. Broncos are favored by four and a half here. And uh, the Bengals will be starting uh, Driscoll. So, hooray. Um, what's your take here? Uh, my initial take was just that the spread was too low. But I'm curious to hear what you think. Yeah, I think it's probably a little too low. Uh, if, if Andy Dalton was playing, I would be much more inclined to bet the Broncos here. Because I do think that Anytime we get a quarterback switch, that has an effect on the line. And I really don't think the drop-off from Dalton to Driscoll is going to be massive. Mm -hmm. You know, I've kind of been preaching that all season, you know, with Nick Mullins and, you know, Brock Osweiler when he first got the job, at least in the beginning before there's tape. Like, I think it's very easy for a, a backup quarterback to give you close to what the starting quarterback gives you. But at the same time, like I just think the Broncos are, are a good football team. They're better than what their record states. Yep. And if they have any chance of making the playoffs, they're going to need to start rattling off you know, a, a little bit of a win streak here. So they had a good win at home against the Steelers. Uh, they're not as good of a road team as they are a home team historically. So we'll see. I mean, I, I'm going to take the Broncos here. But again, this is not a pick that I have a ton of conviction in. I like Denver a decent amount. The fact that they're on the road is really the only thing that's keeping me out of my five. Uh, but yeah, like they've won two games in a row. They're sixth in overall DVOA this year. So uh, it speaks to what you're saying about them being better than their schedule. Uh, but they do have a shot here to run. I mean, they play Cincy, the Niners, home against the Browns, at the Raiders, and then home against the Chargers. Like they could run the table, uh, or they could finish, you know, or, they, or at least like a one loss 
throughout the rest of the year, and that that could get him in. I mean, that probably gets him. That probably gets him in. For so sure. So I uh, I like it, and I I'm a huge fan of backs against the wall, and I really like this Denver team. I really like what they're doing on defense. I think Jeff Driscoll stinks. Uh, obviously, I don't think that that takes a lot of convincing. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna roll with Denver here. I wish they were at home, but I'm gonna roll with Denver. I think Denver's a nice team to bet the rest of the way. Uh, Rams at Lions. Rams off the bye, favored by ten here in Detroit. Tricky game, I think. Matt, what's your take? Uh, my take is that I would be betting the Rams if I was betting this game. Like the thing about the Lions is that they we pretty much know what we're gonna get from them. Like they tend to lose to superior opponents and beat inferior opponents. Sure. Um, that's like the MO of Matt Stafford's career. So I don't love getting him with the points, uh, especially considering all the injuries that they're going through right now. And the Rams are just really good. <laughs> like for my money, they still might be the best team in the league. Uh, I know that the saints have kind of risen to the top of everybody's power ratings recently, but I still think the Rams might be the better team. I think the 10 is probably a fair number. You know, you really can't realistically make a team much larger favorites on the road, although we'll see that that is the case in another game later on. But uh, I'm going to side with the Rams and uh, fade the the sinking ship that is the Detroit Lions. Yeah, I I think I'm with you. Like, it's, it's kind of hard to see how Detroit stops the Rams, and they are literally down to Kenny Galladay as, like, their only legitimate offensive weapon. Um, so I think 10 is a reasonable number. I'm probably not going to bet it. I don't really have much to say. I mean, I think that the Rams are really good. I think that they're going to be challenged in like the second or third round of the playoffs and that's it. Like, I don't really have like a, I don't think anything we can say about the Rams at this point is going to be revolutionary and, uh, the Lions aren't very good. So there you go. Analysis. <laughs> uh, let's pause a minute. So we here, so we can talk about my bookie. Let's talk about things we do know about. Uh, watching football is fun, but it's more entertaining when you have some action on the games. You've heard Matt and I talk about this for weeks. Some of you are still on the sidelines, whether you're an expert or a rookie. You should be betting at my bookie. You're the kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot. Guy or gal, by the way. I'm going to fix that read. Guy or gal. Damn uh, straight. Likes to, likes to bet a little and win a lot. Like playing the numbers in roulette, you can create a big parlay. Pick three teams to win. And if you hit all three, you could turn $100 into 600 there's so much to bet on, college basketball, football, NBA, NHL, custom props, which we haven't even really done a ton of this year in football, but the custom props is a ton of fun. We're going to be doing that a ton during basketball, heavy basketball. Uh, you I know need, you've been you've been doing well on your props too on your streams, right? Yeah, I think you've yeah. Been, really like, I know you hit like a 14 to 1 or the other week. So. Yeah, Tyreek Hill finally did something good in his life, won me a 14 to 1 prop. Uh <laughs> Uh, eSports, you know, you name it, they have it at my bookie, and it's the one bet that we can guarantee you will be happy with all year. We recommend these guys because we trust them. My bookie's been in business for years. They have great online reviews, and their mobile site is easy to use. Sign up this week, and my bookie will give you a 50% deposit bonus to jumpstart your bankroll. It's a great way to earn, you know, even more money when you win. All you have to do is use promo code RotoViz. Uh, also, make sure to follow at BetMyBookie on Twitter. They respond to every mention and direct message. Not to mention, they've given away more than $10,000 in free money to their followers this season. So you're definitely getting a little bit of an edge there if you follow their Twitter handle. Don't miss out on betting sports for the rest of the year. We have tons of great football still to come. Use promo code RotoViz when you sign up at MyBookie and get a 50% deposit bonus. That's promo code RotoViz at the place where you play, you win. And you get paid. MyBookie.ag. Now, before we get into the rest of the games, uh, I do want to just touch quickly on the Giants game this week. Not because I, I shouldn't say I want to, because I would love to just not talk about it. <laughs> but uh, they're home this week against the Bears, and the line is currently off. Because uh, we are awaiting word on Mitchell Trubisky. Sounds like he did end up practicing today uh, after the initial report was that he didn't. So uh, I would imagine that he's questionable right now. Let's assume that Trubisky suits up, Matt. 
and that the Bears are, I don't know, I would imagine they're probably, what, four-point road favorites? Yeah, four, three, some, somewhere in that vicinity. What would be your take on that? Um, I, I haven't given this game much thought considering there's no spread at the moment. Sure, yeah, just your, your initial thought, that's all. My initial thought would probably be to take the Giants as a home dog. I mean, this is a weird week, right? Like, we have a ton of road favorites and a ton of big favorites. But the Giants have looked much better of late. Uh, the Bears' defense obviously is one of the best in football, if not the best in football, and can probably shut down Saquon Barkley as well as anybody in the league. But I still think that the Giants' offense should be able to move the ball. And if they do, we've kind of harped on this all year. I just don't think that the Bears' offense is elite enough to put games away at this point. So I would probably be interested in taking the Giants as a, a home dog. Um, I'd love it if the line was greater than four. That would be uh, definitely interesting to me. So it's something I'm going to be monitoring, and we'll definitely keep an eye on as the, as the week progresses. Yeah, I, I think I, I pretty much agree. I mean, I want to see what the line comes out as, and I want to see who the quarterback is. I mean, if we get Chase Daniel, uh, the Bears might be a value again like they were last week. So. Yes. I'm I'm willing to kind of wait and see on that. I mean, the Bears really have no reason I feel like to play Trubisky in this game because uh, the game doesn't I feel like matter a ton to them, you know, and they can probably win without him. So we'll see what happens. Uh, let's go back to games where we we actually know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> Cardinals at Packers here. Uh, the Packer favored by 14 at home, 44 and a half point total. Matt. I mean, the Cardinals just got blown out by uh, the Chargers. So what do you think happens here in this matchup? <laughs> I, I can already tell we're going to disagree on this one. Yeah. Uh, I like the Packers. They are close to being in my five pack, but uh, I think they're ultimately just going to miss the cut. Rodgers crushes as a home favorite. Uh, he's 43, 24 and three against the spread for his, uh, or since 2003. That's good for a 64.2% uh, win rate. And when you look at games where he's favored by more than a touchdown, he's basically just as good. 22 and 14 against the spread. That's 61.1%. So this this Packers team is obviously still not as good as we've seen from them in the past, right? Like mm -hmm. we were talking before the show, and you know, I, I don't think Devontae Adams is that good despite what his numbers are. You know, Aaron Jones is a solid runner, but he doesn't provide a ton of value in the in the passing game. So I think that this is probably the weakest supporting cast that Aaron Rodgers has ever had to work with. But he still has covered uh, in two of three games as a favorite of greater than seven and a half at home this season. So even though this, this team may not be as talented as, you know, past iterations of the Packers, I still think that they're talented enough to go out and take care of business at home against the Cardinals. You know, the Packers are not mathematically eliminated from the playoffs yet, but they have to start winning games. So uh, this would be a nice way, I think, for them to to possibly get their, you know, the, the back end of the season rolling for them. Yeah, I mean, I definitely see the logic. I, I still just don't think that the Packers are nearly as good as they have been in years past. And I think that, like, the Cardinals getting blown out kind of takes away any potential spread value we may have gotten. I mean, this is right on a key number. So I yep. think tracking this will be really important. But, you know, if the Cardinals just lose by, like, two touchdowns instead of a 1,000, um, <laughs> you know, we might get Packers minus 12 or something like that, and I'd like that a lot more. Uh, the full two touchdowns is a, a little bit of a detraction for me. I mean, I, again, teams who just lost by 28 or more are covering 57% of the time against the spread the following week. Um, so I, I always like that trend. Uh, obviously, the Cardinals are a bad team, but they have been pretty good on defense, and particularly in defending the pass. Like their real weakness this year has been uh, on the ground, uh, and the Packers have been the best run offense in football since uh, about Week Eight when they started letting Aaron Jones go. They lead the league in yards per carry since that time. Another shocking coaching decision, huh? Right. Exactly. Play your best running back. Oh yeah. wow, we can run the ball now. But that's the thing is like I don't know if I trust McCarthy to like actually give him the ball the whole game and like I it, it's it's ultimately a stay away for me but I think if I had to pick a side it would be the Cardinals. Like I'm 
I'm completely chasing in this fantasy pros contest at this point. Like <laughs> I'll probably take the Cardinals just to try to pick a game up somewhere, but I'm not going to do it for like actual dollars. For what it's worth, the sharps do seem to agree with you. Uh, also, the public is is on Arizona, which is a bit interesting. Mm. They're getting 55% of the bets, but 69% of the money. So the substantial bets have come in on Arizona. Now, granted, we're showing that this spread opened up at 14 and a half. So maybe a lot of that early money came in when, they, when you were getting the hook as well. But uh, yeah, so this, I think, is another interesting number to monitor as the week progresses. All right, let's move on to... I don't, this might be the craziest line of the week. I guess the one I, I have the most trouble with. Chiefs minus 15 at the Raiders. Uh, Chiefs coming off a bye and, again, coming off the explosive Monday night game. Prior to that, uh, we have the Raiders who, I mean, we think they stink, but then they do a couple things okay, and they stink again. You know, really hard to get a read on them. Total is 55 and a half, though. Uh, what do you think about the Chiefs here as just, like, mega huge road favorites? <laughs> Yeah, for me, this this is either the Chiefs or nothing, right? Like, I want nothing to do with the Raiders. Um, they are just a really bad team. I don't think that they're playing, you know, for anything at this point. Obviously, like, the coaching staff in particular, I think, knows that they're safe, right, with John Gruden at, at a minimum. So they're just completely done with this year. Um, I looked at road favorites get of greater than two touchdowns. So at least 14 and a half points, obviously that's a really small sample size because we just don't see that very often, but those teams are three and one against the spread since 2003. Um, three of those games were the Patriots in 2007 when they were just housing teams. Yep. Uh, they went two and one. And in 2005, the Colts were one and zero oh in that situation. So, I'm not sure how predictive this trend is. You know, again, it's it's a really small sample size, but we have seen teams in this situation covered before. You know, like really good offensive teams against an awful team. They go out and they take care of business despite being on the road. Uh, the one trend that I really like is Andy Reid off a of bye. He is historically really good when you give him time. He's 10-5 and five against the spread in the regular season since 2003 with 14 days of rest. So I think that that's enough for me to like the Chiefs in this game. Uh, but again, like, I just don't know if I can really put money on the Chiefs. Uh, for what it's worth, the public is not scared at all. The Chiefs are <laughs> receiving... Huge shock. <laughs> <laughs> the Chiefs are getting 74% of the bets and 89% of the money right now. Jesus. So... Yeah, I mean, no number is high is too high. That, that, that's like my fear, though, is I just feel like... They just seem like such an easy bet every week, but it's such a big number, and it's a division game, and they're on the road, and like if you expand the sample, division dogs of 10 or more are covering 57.8% of the time since 2006. Uh, that's obviously a pretty strong trend. I just, I really struggle here with the number being so big, and it's like one of those things where I feel like that's how I'm supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. But then, like you said, like the small sample has been pretty effective. Like the reason that these lines don't come around that often is because these teams, you know, the, these teams being very good playing against a very bad team doesn't happen very often in their own division. But it's kind of what's happening. So, yeah, it, it's hard to pick. I I would lean Raiders just because I get a big home dog in a division game. I'd probably take it. But like you expect the Chiefs to really score a ton of points, obviously. You know, like, that's that's real. Uh, Eric Berry is practicing this week. I don't think he's going to play just because he literally, it's like his first time practicing all year. Um, but if he did play in this game, I would I would super lean, lean Chiefs just because then I feel like their defense would be a lot better. Eric Berry's been, like, a real game changer for them on defense. Uh, so we'll see. I don't, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on the game, but I, I don't have, like, a true lean. I would probably lean Raiders, though, if I did. I need the Chiefs to score like 40 in this game. Cause oh, yeah, that you got them in fantasy. I've got the Mahomes, Travis Kelsey stack in my uh, my fantasy football players championship finals matchup. So uh, I squeaked it out last week. Now I need the big boys to come in and do their thing. You know, they're well-rested. 
Uh, I sat him down, gave him a pep talk, maybe a little bonus incentive check coming in the mail. So take care of business one more week, Chiefs. Then you can put it on autopilot for the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, I have Kelsey on my best ball championship squad, so I would like that too. Be a very nice game. Uh, you're fighting Jets, Matt, at the Titans, who are just coming off a, a pitiful Monday Night Football loss to Houston. Uh, Titans still favored by 7.5 at home. Total is at 40.5. Uh, the public seems to have a pretty strong lean on this. I mean, 58% of the tickets are on your Jets, but 90% of the money, at least in the early going. <laughs> so that's pretty strong. Um, this spread was also significantly higher when it opened yeah, up. Yeah, it opened at uh, 10.5, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, big move, big move. But what do you make of the matchup? Um, do you know how many points per game the Titans are averaging this season offhand? Uh, it's gotta be like 20, 17 points per game, essentially. <gasps> the so Jets have actually played some of those games with Blaine Gabbert, but yes, that's terrible. I mean, the Jets have played some of their games with, uh, Josh McCown and <laughs> Sam Darnold <laughs> and they're averaging more than 17 points per game. That's fair. <laughs> So, like, in my eyes, these are pretty similar teams. Like, the Titans just have had some better success in terms of their win and loss record. So the fact that I'm getting more than a touchdown with the Jets to me uh, is really appealing. Uh, I thought the Jets played the Patriots tough last week. They were in a position where they could have covered that game, ultimately didn't on a drop ski. But uh, Shock. That's, that's, that's classic Jets football right there. So... I think that this line is just too high. I mean, if this was 10 and a half, this would be my five-star century banger. You know, mortgage the house, sell all your jewelry, liquidate your assets, lock of the year. Uh, but I still like it at, at seven and a half. <laughs> so how much <laughs> How much of the assets are we liquidating on the seven and a half? I'm going to keep it to what I already have liquidated, which is basically everything in my life. So... <laughs> Except my extra monitor, I'll never sell you, baby. There you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the Titans are definitely not the correct side. Like, the Jets are certainly the correct side. From a betting perspective, I do worry a little bit that, like, Tennessee just looked really bad in an island game, and that's that was pushing the number. Yep. But then again, it opened to 10.5, so maybe, so maybe not. I mean, obviously not, right? Uh, that's definitely fueled the betting. Um. And the line has come down. So, yeah, I think the Jets are probably still getting too many points here. Uh, Titans are at home. But their defense has been very terrible. Their offense has been really good since the bye, honestly, with the exception of last week. I just uh, I just have concerns. I mean, I think that the Jets play pretty solid defense. And I think that offensively they can score. They, I think Josh McCown can lead to scoring points. I think Sam Darnold can lead to scoring points. Like I think they have guys, you know. I mean, if the Titans are only going to score 17 points, I only need 10 out of the Jets. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, well, I think, I we think that's reasonable. Once. I think we talked once about, like, the, the low totals and the big spreads. Like, it's it's really hard to do both. So, yeah. Uh, I think you either probably like the over or you like the the Jets here. No? That's kind of how I feel. Sure. Just like, I, I don't even care about the total. Just give me the Jets. <laughs> Vikings at Patriots. Uh, the Vikes are five point dogs here. Pats favored by five at home. Uh, what do you think of this one? This is my favorite bet of the week. Big shocker. Uh, I like the Patriots. So, Patriots has a home favorite of seven points or less since 2003. Has basically been a license to print money. 13, I'm sorry, 35, 13, and five against the spread. That's a 72.9% win rate. Um, they're, they're three and one in that situation this season. Uh, and the one loss could have been a push against the chiefs, depending on what line you got that out. I know personally, I grabbed them at minus three early in the week. So it's just like, it's one of those spots where you just have to auto bet it. Like, I don't think the Vikings are particularly good. Um, I, I, and I'm not sure how good the Patriots are either, to be honest, but I just think that the coaching staff, Tom Brady combination is enough that they're going to take care of business at home, you know, virtually every time, roughly 73% of the time to be exact. 
Yeah, and I think that uh, this is actually a pretty good matchup for the Patriots on defense. Uh, they have one of the best cornerback tandems in football, or probably the best cornerback tandem in football. And we know that the Vikings funnel a lot of their offense through Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs. Uh, Steph Diggs, I don't even think practiced today. Thielen was limited. So reasonably that they got, those guys are a little dinged up. And, uh, I mean, if you take those guys away, it's really difficult, I think, for Minnesota to score points. Kirk Cousins has uh, been pretty hot and cold. Like, I, he, has, he has had moments of greatness, but he has not been great, I guess would be the best way to say it. Certainly not worth thirty million a year or whatever they're paying. Them. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I know you love that. So yeah, I mean, I think that the Pats are absolutely the correct side. Uh, one of your bets, uh, one of your trends, like before we even started the season, was that the Patriots are like insane at covering, like just in general. So yeah, you gotta bet them less than a touchdown. I'll take them. We took them last week, I think, at, at, as like ten point favorites, and we covered. So we'll take them at five. You did. But I I'm uh, not sorry. I did not take them, but. I will take them this week because we have a little saying at the Action Network. Uh-oh. Good quarterbacks win. Great quarterbacks cover. Boom. On brand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so let's wrap up. Let's uh, get to the last couple of games here. We got 49ers at Seattle, another big spread. Uh, I'm sick of all these big spreads. Uh, but Seattle's favored by 10 here at home. Uh, this is the 425 game on Sunday. Uh, what are you going to make in the matchup? I'm going with Russell. Uh, pretty much I'll take him as a home favorite whenever I can get it. Uh, his numbers aren't as good as what they were when he was, you know, younger playing for that elite defense. But he's still 24-19-3 and three against the spread as a home favorite and 1-0-1 oh, in that situation this season. So uh, the Seahawks definitely appear to be a team on the rise. I wish... They would just stop running the ball so damn much. Yeah, they refuse. <laughs> but you know what? Like, it's hard for – they're not going to change things when they're winning. So uh, the 49ers, to me, look just toast. I, and Nick Mullins has turned back into a pumpkin. Uh, it wouldn't shock me if we see C.J. Beathard before long. So uh, I will take the Seahawks here laying the 10 points. Uh, I'm going to take the Niners here. Uh, division dogs – between seven and a half and twelve and a half, so I pretty much just split around the the next two key numbers from ten. Uh, 170, 131, and four since two thousand three. That's fifty six and a half percent cover rate. Uh, I do like that. I don't think that Seattle is the kind of team that blows teams away. That's really why I think the number is too big. Uh, because Seattle runs the football so much, I don't think that they are going to score enough points really at least not in bunches, to, to win by more than 10. I think that when they get a lead, they're going to just keep running the ball. Uh, with a lead, they run the ball uh, just an absurd amount of, of, the, of the time. Uh, I just think that they want to just sit on leads and win games that way. And you can't you can do that against the Niners when they're struggling to score, which they have been. So I don't think that they cover the 10. I think that they win, but I think 10 is just too many points to lay. Uh, so I will take the 10 with the Niners. I will say, Seahawks offense, the last seven weeks, 31, 27, 28, 17, 31, 27, 30. So at least 27 points in six of their last seven games. Yeah, but in those, I mean, you're looking at it, so I'll just ask you. Like, I feel like a lot of those games, they've been either playing catch-up or like in shootout situations. Like, a lot of those games have been close. Yeah, so they that's have true. So on the muscle. Right. I mean, they beat the Lions 28-14, and they beat the Raiders 27-3. But the Rams, Chargers, Rams again, Packers, Panthers have all been shootout-type situations. You are correct there. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I I want I just want better football. Like, I don't like the weeks where we have, like, six seven-point favorites or more and, like, two double-digit road, like, double road favorites. Like, come on. Believe in the muscle. Come on, NFL. Uh, last game of the week, we got Skins at Eagles. Uh, just a classic matchup of Colt McCoy versus a bad Philly team. Uh, Eagles are just under the key number of seven, though. They're favored by six and a half. 44-point total, Matt. What do you think of this? NFC East just friggin' meltdown. The NFL is really pushing the boundaries of what people will give up their Monday nights to watch on television. <laughs> 
<laughs> like we have had some real stinkers. We've got to deal with Jason Witten and Booger McFarlane riding around on his little thing. Like I, if you're not watching basketball on Monday nights at this point, you're a real sadist in my opinion. <laughs> like you just love the pain. Um, I'm going to go with the Eagles. Uh, they, they turned it on in the second half. I thought against the giants, maybe they don't cover this game against the Redskins, but I still think they're just the better team of the two. Uh, I don't want to back Colt McCoy. And so I won't give me the Eagles minus six and a half. Yeah. And I, I do think that Philly is still in play to win the division. I, I've mentioned that to you uh, on the side and the Redskins, I don't think have that chance, even though they have the better record. Like, I just think that they're done. Uh, the Colt McCoy thing is this is not going to work. He wasn't good last week. He's just not good. I, mean, I think that's reasonable for a guy who's been a backup his whole career. Uh, but the Eagles, if they get on a run here, I mean, they can they can win. They can control their own destiny pretty much still because they play the Redskins twice and they play Dallas once. Uh, so they'll have a really good they'll have a good enough record against the NFC East where they will you know win the division. I think even if they tie Dallas in terms of wins and losses. So. Give me the birds. Minus six and a half. Birds. Let's get to the book it, my bookie picks of the week. Uh, uninspiring week last week. I mean, you went three and two, Matt. I went two and three. So we're 500. All right for us. Um, <laughs> I don't want to give away don't the bring, Don't bring down my record like that. No, I mean, you're I, crushing. I was 60% I just last it. week. I was a 60% winner. That's good enough in this league where they pay <laughs> for play, you know? <laughs> No, you're right. I, I'm just I don't I don't want to talk about my listen, guys, I promise you the Saturday show where I give the picks, like my record has been way better. With a little <laughs> more time to digest, a little more information, a little more research. I'm just a data guy. You know, Matt's a, Matt's got a great feel. You should listen to him. And then in three days you should listen to me on Saturday after. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna have Davis on this week, Davis Maddock. And he has really dominated the fantasy pros contest. So if nothing else, come listen to him because he's better, better than him. Yeah, that's cool. That's a nice. Uh, that's a nice get for you. Yeah, you know, sometimes I gotta flex the the resources a little bit. Uh, so who do you got for us, Matt, this week? Uh, well, I don't know if this is good news for you, bad news for me, both. But I think we are going to have a lot of overlap on our picks here. Uh, I'm taking the Patriots minus five. The Colts minus four, the Browns plus six, the Jets plus seven and a half. And my last spot was close, but ultimately I'm going to take the Steelers minus three and a half. Uh, Yeah, no, you're right. A lot of overlap here because I am also on the Colts, the Pats, the Browns, and the Steelers. And then where I differentiate is I, instead of taking your fighting Jets, I'm going to take the Thursday favorite with uh, the Saints minus seven and a half. So... I mean, I, I do feel really good about this week, so I'm happy that you and I are on this, like, the same page. Um, hopefully that is not just the kiss of death for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not, you know, like, I would imagine our record on games where we're aligned is pretty good. But yeah, I don't, to go I don't know that archives. for sure. I'd have to go back and look. But, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I think that's probably a reasonable take. <laughs> <laughs> uh, according to uh, Lamarca Labs, uh, we are 23, 16, and 4 when <laughs> agreeing on picks. Not better than that. It's like at least 350 and 3 lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Where the Drew Brees at home of picking. Um <laughs> Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Laying the Points brought to you by my bookie. Please be sure to subscribe to, rate, and review the show on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. Get that deposit bonus on my bookie for using promo code ROTOVIZ. And uh, subscribe to the stream here. I, I th- we had a decent amount of viewers tonight. We had a little action in the chat. Always good to see. Uh, you know, you hit the follow button on Twitch or you subscribe. You're going to get notifications when we go live. So definitely don't miss a second of what me and Matt have to offer. That's going to do it for Matt LaMarca. I'm Anthony Miko. May the odds be ever in your favor.